Wilhelmsen begins chapter 1 by noting that there is no distinct science of epistemology in the Thomistic sense of the word science, and this is because science is an understanding of things through their causes. But the causes of knowledge are many, and therefore we might expect that knowledge of a particular object will be dealt with in the science studying that particular object and will not be available to be studied by some additional science to be called epistemology. Although it's not a science, epistemology does have a number of valid meanings. We use the term with at least five possible meanings, three of which are valid. The first meaning is historical. Historically, epistemology has come to mean the way that men answer or confront the critical problem. The critical problem, coming from Descartes, is how does the mind move from knowledge of itself and its operations to knowledge of things? In other words, how can the mind come to know more than its own thoughts? In this modern sense, the word epistemology can refer to one's position on the nature of human knowledge and its relation to the extramental world. Epistemology can also mean the metaphysics of knowledge and truth, or the psychology of human knowledge. In the first sense, epistemology refers to the part of philosophy of being that studies the act of knowing and the conditions proper to that act in light of its very existence. And in the second sense, it refers to the part of philosophical psychology that studies the origin, nature, and processes of human thinking. But there's no real reason, Wilhelmsen says, to call these epistemology rather than simply leaving them as subparts of the other fields, and therefore both these doctrinal meanings are illegitimate. The fourth meaning of epistemology would be a study linking the previous two, linking the psychology of knowledge with the metaphysics of knowledge and truth. This would give us a philosophical grasp of the nature and conditions of the act of knowing as such. Wilhelmsen says this should be the principal meaning of epistemology for us. And finally, epistemology can also refer to the philosophy of the unique kinds of knowledge. There are as many valid epistemologies as there are valid ways of understanding. This type of epistemology would then investigate the conditions proper to the various types of knowledge and would be not one science but many. It would be a part of every other science, not a distinct science on its own. For example, we might speak of the epistemology of historical knowledge. What are the conditions under which it, it historical knowledge can emerge and be reliable? And the same question about scientific and other types of knowledge. To review, then, there are three valid meanings of epistemology. The first is historical, and it is dealt with in part one of this book. The second is doctrinal, about the relation between metaphysics and psychology. It is dealt with in the theory of judgment in part two of this book. And the third meaning is doctrinal as applied to the diverse sciences, and this is dealt with in part three in the final chapter of this book. That's my quick overview of chapter one of Frederick Wilhelmsen's book, Man's Knowledge of Reality. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.